Hey guys, what is up? Got another review here for you today. Continuing on with our Bridgestone line that we were doing, we have up next the Bridgestone E6, which is a very popular golf ball. Um, it's actually not been requested that much. It's actually the E12 holds that title as far as most requested Bridgestone ball. Uh, but the E6 is very popular as well. I see lots of people buying them, using them, and I seem to find lots of them on the course. So since seem, a lot of people seem to like to use them, let's find out why. All right, so let's get in. So this ball, of course, is actually an actual Bridgestone ball. I mean, so is the Precept, the, the last one I, I reviewed, but this one actually has got the Bridgestone logo, which is nice there. I like the B on the front. Does definitely kind of remind me of the tire company, though, which I know they're the same, but still, like, it kind of just feels like <laughs> that B on there. That's the first thing I think of. Having the number uh, right above there to the top right, honestly, it's pretty simplistic, but I like it. It's fine. I mean, it definitely uh, uh, shows their brand. Like I said, it immediately makes me think of something, so I get that. Uh, sometimes less is more. And then on the side there, the alignment tool, I, I just don't care for it all. You've just got a basic E6 uh, that has a arrow that gets really wide at the wide at the right part and then gets skinnier to the left part. So the whole logo kind of goes from the right to left, so I don't like that. Um, the alignment tool, it makes it very difficult when they're not one size of line, like one width. I, trouble, I have trouble lining up my ball if it's like going to a point or whatever, because sometimes I just mix up where the line is. Um, so I don't care for that. Uh, so off to, you know, as far as the, the design of the golf ball, it's very simplistic. It leaves a lot to be desired. Uh, so chipping and putting around the green. So chipping, so this, so where this golf ball immediately differentiates itself from the Precept Laddie is it does have checkup. It actually has quite a bit of spin. Uh, even, even just chipping right off the green, that ball checks up, it tugs. You can see the spin coming off of it when you hit your shot. And I mean, you definitely, when you see it hit the green, you can tell that, that it's going to either go left, right. I mean, it's going to go whatever way you want it to go. Um, which is super impressive, which is nice. This has actually got a Serlin cover opposed to the very cheap Iometer blend uh, that's on the preset, which could be why. Um, it definitely does feel a little bit more like it would stick a green, so that could be why also. Um, but it is just a two-piece golf ball, so it's not doing anything different in that regard. So it's got to be something with that cover as well, just because, I mean, we're talking light years difference in that spin. Coming off the putter, it does, again, feel... Um, a little firm. Um, actually, this golf ball feels a little firm all around for me, especially for a two-piece golf ball. Usually, two pieces are very soft. They usually jump off the club. That wasn't the case here. The Bridgestone doesn't seem to jump off the club. It feels a little draggy, um, and I don't know why, but it just feels a little draggy, especially com compared to the Precept, which I was just hitting, um, and that's the reason I keep comparing it is because Bridgestone, same company, same ball, whatever, but it's just one's cheaper, and this one, you know, I gotta hold this one to a little higher standard because this one's actually $2 a golf ball opposed to 75 cents a golf ball, so I expect a lot more out of this one, and just with the feel, I wasn't, I just didn't care for it. It was a little firmer. It's something I would usually expect out of a three-piece or even a four-piece, um, but it's definitely a little draggy there, and then coming off the putter, same thing, a little firm. I mean, at least you get the feedback. I don't mind firm on my putter, so I don't mind that, um, but it definitely jumps off the club and it definitely rolls a long way. I kind of had to get used to it and, and stop coming back so far on my putts because it will go forever. Um, so kind of mixed results there. All right, so let's get into the numbers then. Maybe the numbers will be the redeeming uh, quality there because so far I'm just kind of having mixed emotions. Uh, so maybe these numbers will really change my mind. It will be difficult though because the Precept had by far the best numbers I really had ever tested, which is crazy to think about, but it is the truth. Um, so let's get right into them here. The nine iron, we had 93.2 on ball speed, which eh, it's okay. Um, that's not really where I want it to be, especially after the precept was 97.5. Excuse me. Um, but uh, 128.9, that's an average number there. Uh, 123 on your carry, 21.9. Now that is a very, very high launch. Uh, so already I can tell you right there that, that with that high of a launch, that's by far the highest launch I've had. Um, this golf ball is probably going to be more along the beginner line. It's designed to get up in the air, have a little bit more spin, and, and just really, instead of maybe necessarily not spinning on the green as much, just get it to kind of flop up there. So some really average numbers there. Uh, the only thing that really sparked my interest was the launch angle, and honestly it might even be a little too high, but at least it does have that going for it. Getting into the 7 iron, 58.24 on, uh, on the spin, which is good, but if you saw the last review, I mentioned how the, with two-piece golf balls, a lot of the time I don't mind them being a little higher spin just because with a two-piece, you know, you want it to stop on a green. Um, the good news is because of this golf ball's cover, it does stop on a green just fine, so it being in that 5800 is, is okay. 
um, it's perfectly okay. Actually, it's right in the sweet spot. That's right where you want to be. Um, and then 107.8, average number there, average to low, 164.6, um, and then 153.2. So those numbers are actually pretty decent, and that's mainly because you've got a 16 degree launch angle, which is pretty low compared to what I've had. So that's why I was getting a little bit more roll out of it. I wasn't getting as much air. Um, those numbers are all just kind of okay. Nothing really jumps out at me there. It's pretty average. Um, I've definitely tested some better golf balls. Um, and then once we get into the five hybrid, we're looking at 3,955 spin. That's actually on the higher end from the hybrid. Um, I haven't had anything higher than that yet. Uh, 121 on the ball speed, which is actually pretty good. And then 200.4, which is really good. 187.4, which is really good. 12.9, um, so it's actually the second highest launch. Okay, so I like those numbers. Um, and it does, like I said earlier, this golf ball does feel kind of firm. Um, again, I don't know why. It's a two-piece golf ball and it's kind of designed for beginners, but it does feel firm. And to be honest with you, I think that's why it's compressing a little better off of the hybrids, just because I think it says that it's for average swingers, but average can kind of be subjective like some some guys some pros will tell you average means 90 and some will tell you it means 100 that's a huge difference you know for sure because i can swing sometimes for these videos i'll play around and swing different speeds and i can tell you there's a difference between 90 and 100 there's a clear difference um so i'm not sure may, maybe they're maybe they're talking about more of that like 100 to 105 or, or somewhere in there for average um but i had a lot more success as you can see off of the five hybrid and then once we get into the driver, now with that being said, the driver hopefully has a little bit better numbers because if the golf ball is firmer and it's taking a little more to compress, maybe the driver will compress it a little bit more. All right, so 2,538 as you can see there. Now 240.9 is dreadfully low. Ball speed, 134.9, dreadfully low. Uh, 240.9, dreadfully low, and then carry 220.6 uh that is that is pretty much the lowest i've ever tested now i will say when i was testing this golf ball my swing speeds were all right where they need to be the launch angle was 12.7 which um is pretty low it's it's not super low by any means but it is it is pretty decently low which could be why i was getting not a lot of distance um that, that could be me but i'll be honest with you looking at the ball speed also it's just abysmal and like i said this golf ball felt like it was dragging the whole time uh just when you hit it it just just didn't feel right all right we'll get into the durability here so the precept even it being 75 cents a golf ball was pretty decent uh, i mean actually it was pretty darn good almost perfect for what i would say um, this golf ball is pretty close but actually it's a little more scuffed up than the precept was it's got a huge gaping scrape on the front um, and then you know a couple scrapes here and there honestly it's pretty close to the precept so i think bridgestone's really nailed it as far as like you know their durability and, and their cover they seem to know what they're doing there which is awesome um, so i definitely give it high remarks there but um I will say that the precept comes pretty close to it. And again, when you're paying $2 a golf ball compared to 75 cents a golf ball, I just expected a little more maybe. Overall guys, after looking at the golf ball, after looking at the numbers, really trying to figure out where these numbers are coming from, it's hard for me to recommend this golf ball. It just didn't feel right to me. It felt a little firm. Um, I'm not sure who the intended audience is 100% for. I think there are a couple things it does a little bit better than the precepts, such as spinning off the green, you know, like little chip shots and stuff. Um, but the precept is 75 cents a golf ball, and honestly, it kicks butt. Uh, so it'd be really difficult for me to recommend this golf ball to a beginner when they could, for a lot less, get the precept. Because you can lose a lot more of those precepts and not have to worry about 75 cents a golf ball. $25 a golf ball or $25 a dozen for a two piece is on the more expensive side. It's actually, I mean, that's, that's about as expensive as two pieces get, you know? Um, so with that being said, it would just be really hard for me to recommend this golf ball to anybody. But like I said, if you guys do use this golf ball and you do love it, if you have a lot of objections to me, tell me, tell me in the comments, let me know what you think. Um, but I just did not have that much luck with it. And frankly, I would much rather recommend the precept, which is crazy. I thought I'd never hear myself say that, but I think it's a better golf ball. Guys, as always, keep watching to keep learning, keep saving. And uh, next up, we have the E12, which has been one of the most requested. So hopefully I'll have some really good luck with that. Until next time.